my heart is heavy because I have a word for you today. How many of you came expecting today? I really have a word for us today, and I know God's going to do something special in this place. So why don't you grab your Bibles with me today? And turn with me to the book of John. We're going to be starting off in verse 31. It's so great to see the God's anointed now generation of San Diego. Aren't they powerful on worship and preaching? And they're cool too. They got a little bit of San Diego stilo. So, so powerful to see what God is doing within the San Diego gang. Also within my family, my cousins. God is raising them up and using them. So awesome to see how you could pass on a godly legacy. Amen. If you stay the course, if you continue to hold up the boundaries for your family. I believe God honors that and God raises up your children and your grandchildren. And that's what's happening within our family. Even my cousin Matthew and Dylan, they're Newporters, but and they always like to surf. And I tell them, yeah, you caught the right wave. The third wave hits you, and now they're saved, surrendered. They were, you know, lost and found, but they're right there in, in the UTC, and one of them's with me and Woodier as well. So God's doing an amazing work within their life. The same God that does it for my family does it for your family. And I believe that. Amen. John 4.31. I'm going to begin reading. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus. Somebody say, my food. Is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Bow your heads all over this place. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray you'd use your servant. God, I pray you would anoint me. I pray you would let your word fall on good soil today and let it be transmitted the way you spoke it unto me. Let it be imparted into your people today. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you're seated, I want you to turn to two people and tell them, stay hungry. The title of my message today is Stay Hungry. Today we're looking at a text which is going to be the base of our message tonight. And it's a time in Jesus' ministry where Jesus had just finished witnessing to the Samaritan woman, right? And the Samaritan woman was a thirsty woman. And we find Jesus dealing with her thirst. Jesus gave her living water, and then Jesus had been ministering to her for some time. He was on a journey, and he went out of his way to find that thirsty woman. Jesus dealt with her thirst, and then we find in this text right here is the disciples come looking for Jesus, and after Jesus deal is, deals with the woman's thirst, he begins to deal with his disciples' hunger. The disciples show up to Jesus, and they know Jesus had been ministering. They thought Jesus was hungry, so they told Jesus, eat something. Matter of fact, they try to rush Jesus and say, Rabbi, eat something. They assumed he was hungry. They were just trying to be some good disciples, trying to make sure their leader was okay, trying to make sure their leader was nutritioned and make sure their leader was all right. But Jesus did something funny. Jesus burned them. Jesus burned them. He told them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. In other words, what Jesus was telling his disciples is that my hunger cannot be satisfied by your bread. My stomach isn't hungry. My spirit is. His spirit was hungry. He was focused on his spiritual hunger. And what Jesus told his disciples is that my hunger is satisfied when I fulfill God's will for my life. And when I finish God's work for my life, only then my hunger is satisfied. And this is important right here where we see what Jesus is doing because in this text, Jesus is doing something. He's distinguishing between his physical hunger and his spiritual hunger. 
His disciples thought, man, he must be physically hungry, but Jesus was spiritually hungry. His spiritual hunger outweighed his natural hunger. And when we look to the life of Jesus, I'm able to find that he was a hungry leader. When I look at Jesus, I'm able to see a man who was hungry for God's will. I'm able to see a man who was hungry to finish everything that God had in store for his life. Jesus was hungry. And this third wave needs some hungry people. This third wave needs people who are more hungry than the first wave and people who are more hungry than the second wave. Pastor Sonny said something heavy. He says, you know, the first generation wasn't as skilled and educated as this generation, but they were more hungry than you. They weren't the most educated in the room. They weren't the most prepared in the room, but they were the hungriest in the room. They were hungry for God's will. They were hungry for nations. They were willing to work long, hard hours. They were willing to live in rehab home and break strongholds in new cities and put the Victory Outreach banner in other countries. They adjusted to new cultures and learned new languages. They were willing to give everything that they had in order to fulfill the mission and the promise that God had upon their life. They were hungry. They were hungry for nations. They were hungry for cities. They were hungry for treasures. They had a good appetite. They wanted everything that God promised them. And they fulfilled the promise of treasures out of darkness because they were hungry individuals. You come from a fabric of leadership who were hungry for God's will, who were hungry for God's call, who were hungry for God's promises to come to pass. And this concept of being hungry and thirsty is something we find in God's word. This imagery of being hungry and thirsty is a spiritual concept in God's word. From the prophets of the Old Testament to Jesus and on through the book of Revelation, we're able to find God's leaders depicted as those who had a desire for God's will and who had a desire for God. Being hungry and thirsty is a quality that Jesus looked for in his disciples. He told his disciples things like, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He told his disciples things that blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. When Jesus looked at his disciples, he didn't just want willing people, he wanted hungry people. When he looked in, his, in their eyes, he wanted to see that they had a spiritual appetite within their life. He wanted hungry leaders. Are there any hungry leaders in this place today? That didn't convince me. I said, are there any hungry leaders in this place today? Today I want to look at the appetite, the food, and the table of Jesus. Are you with me today? First, let's talk about the appetite of Jesus. When I look at Jesus' life, I'm able to find that in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he begins his ministry in hunger. Matthew 4, 1 through 2, it says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days... And 40 nights, he was hungry. Jesus began his ministry in hunger. He had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And Jesus was 100% God, 100% man, so naturally he was hungry. And the devil showed up on the scene to come and tempt Jesus and try to tempt Jesus and try to get him to shift his appetite. He told him, command these stones to become bread. To test the mission, the motives of Jesus, whether or not he would use his power for selfish gain and whether or not he would give in to the gratification of his flesh. But Jesus had an aid and Jesus was hungry and the devil came to him in a hungry moment. Yes, Jesus was hungry, but what the devil didn't know is that he was more hungry for the will of God than he was for that bread. He was more hungry for the will of God than he was to satisfy his flesh. In other words, his spiritual hunger outweighed his physical hunger. Jesus was more hungry spiritually than he was physically. His spiritual desire outweighed his physical desire. When it came to Jesus, 
He would rather satisfy his father than satisfy his flesh. When the devil told them, command these stones to become bread, Jesus told the devil that man does not live off of bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, he displayed his hunger, that he was more hungry for God's word than he was for the bread. He was more hungry to satisfy his father than to satisfy his flesh. I wonder if there's still some people in the church house that say, Lord, I'd rather satisfy you than satisfy my desire, because I know if I satisfy you, you'll satisfy my desire. I don't need to worry about my hunger. I don't need to worry about my problems. I don't need to worry about my situation. All I need to do is satisfy you. And if I satisfy you, you'll satisfy me. He was a hungry leader. He hungered for God's word. He hungered for God's presence. He hungered for God's will. And I want, to, I want you to know something today about hungry people. Hungry people are aggressive. <laughs> hungry people will make a way where there was no way. Hungry people make it happen. Hungry people make a way. Hungry people don't make excuses. Hungry people make things take place. Hungry people will do whatever they have to do and whenever they have to do it in order to get that thing done or satisfy the father's appetite for their life. Are you with me today? We need to make sure that we're attentive to our spiritual appetite because what could happen is we could begin to develop some spiritual eating disorders. I'm going to talk about them today. Is that all right? The first eating disorder is spiritual anorexics. These are the people who starve themselves. These are the people who refuse to eat. These are the type of people who refuse to listen, the type of people who push the food away. And the thing about these people is that they think they look good. Oh, they think that they're glowing. But realistically, everybody could notice and see that they haven't been eaten. Everybody could notice and see that they're sick. But they think they look good. They think they're shining. But really, they're sick. And they're in a dangerous place. You know why? It's because anorexia actually begins to shut your organs down. And on the inside, they're beginning to shut down. And on the inside, they're not able to fight infection. They're not able to fight the things that are trying to mess them up and take them out. Why? It's because they're not eating no more. They refuse to eat. They refuse to listen. They refuse to come to church. They refuse to show up to family life flow. They refuse to show up to gang. They don't answer leaders' calls. They block leader on Instagram. They block their leaders on Snapchat. They don't listen to their leadership. They don't listen to nobody. They don't listen to their parents. And if they don't listen to them, I'm sure they don't listen to God as well. They disconnect themselves from eating environments. They disconnect themselves from leadership. They think they look good, but I came to say today, if you're in that place, you're sick. Begin to shut down and wonder why you keep losing. You wonder why you're in a losing battle. Because you're not eating spiritually. You're getting sick inside. Don't become a spiritual anorexic in this place. Secondly are the spiritual bulimics. These are the people who do take avenues in order to avoid gaining weight. They're the type of people who purge food out before it could digest. They don't let food digest. They get it out of their system before it could enter into, the, into their digestive system and feed their body and feed their nutrients and feed their muscles. They're the spiritual bulimics, the type of people who don't let anything digest. When people try to feed them, when people are trying to give them some nutrients, in front of people, they look like they're eating. 
Oh, oh they sit at the circle. They're sitting in the, in the, at the table, and, the, and they're standing in the circle, and they're in the leadership session, and they're all nodding their head, and they're saying amen, and they're looking at you smiling, and they know how to say I receive it. But what happens is, is when they leave that leader, when they leave that conversation, they say, yeah, that's good. I'm going to change. But what they do is they walk away, and they spit it all out. They say, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just picking on me. They're just mad at me. They're just hating on me. And they spit it all out. Nothing digests. Don't let the word digest no more. They hear messages like this and they want to spit it out already. They want to walk out of the church. They want to get out of here as quick as they can. They're sick. The rebukes don't digest. The correction don't digest. Nothing settles within them. Nothing is able to feed them. They're sick. Spiritual bulimics. Don't become a spiritual bulimic. Judas was a spiritual bulimic. He stood under the the best preaching. He heard some of the most miraculous stories. He was there when God was moving. He was there when Jesus was healing. He stood in in the assembly of the great, but he never let it digest. got to be a people who let it digest within us. I know it may not feel good sometimes. I know it may hurt sometimes. I know you may not always agree or see it eye to eye, but listen to me. Just let it digest. Just let it get inside of you. Just let it change you. Just let it mold you. Just let it fix you. Thirdly is the spiritual obese. These are the people who eat too much. These are the people that every time you turn around, they're eating. And they're so heavy that they can't even move no more. They're so heavy that they can't even move people anymore. Oh, they read a lot, but they don't lead a lot. There's an inlet, but there's no outlet. They're getting a lot, but they're not discipling. They're hearing some good messages and hearing some good teachings, but they ain't giving it to nobody. They ain't sharing it with nobody. They're not imparting into the homes. They're not imparting into the new people. They're not connected in the newcomer zone. They don't want to give nobody nothing. They just want to eat it all up. And I want to let you know today, if you find yourself in this place, you ain't moving fast no more. The words you're hearing, the messages you're hearing, they're not just for you. They're for those that are under you. They're for those that are around you. They're for those that are beside you. There must be an outlet along with our inlet. If you want to keep a good appetite, somebody say amen with me today. Watch your appetite. We need leaders who have a healthy appetite. I want you to know today you have pastors that have a good appetite. And you, have pa- and you have founders that also have a good spiritual appetite. At Pastor Sonny's age, he's more hungry than he's ever been. Despite his age, despite Sister Julie's age, they're still hungry. No matter how old we get, we should still be coming more hungry within our life. The older we grow in Christ is the more hungry we should become. If our hunger is diminishing, that's not because we're becoming mature. That's because we're becoming cold. I want you to remember, remember the you who got saved at that location or at that time and what God did within your life. And at that moment, how hungry you were to tell your friends about Jesus. How hungry you were to share the gospel. How hungry you were to bring people to the church. How hungry you were to spread the good news. How hungry you were to pack out your car with souls and post about Jesus and let people know about your church and let people know about your leadership. Remember how hungry you were? Oh, it's getting quiet today. Remember how hungry you were? I wonder what that person would tell you if they seen you today. I wonder what the person, you, when you got saved, would tell you if they seen you today. Would they say, man, I want to be hungry like him. Man, I want to be hungry like her. Or would they say, oh, no, I don't want to be nothing like them. They're dead. 
We have models that have went before us of people who've developed a spiritual appetite that doesn't diminish but keeps on growing and keeps on growing and keeps on growing. Of people that aren't satisfied, of people that aren't content, but of people who are hungry. We need to watch our spiritual appetites. Jesus had a good appetite. We talked about the appetite of Jesus. Now let's talk about the food of Jesus. Are you with me today? We find Jesus in the Bible using food multiple times to preach messages. The little boy feeding the thousands like he did for offering right now. The woman with the crumb at the table. Jesus cooking fish for the disciples on the beach. But in John 4, 31 through 34, and also Matthew 4, we're able to find the food of Jesus. And it says it like this. Meanwhile, his disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Right here, we're able to discover the food that satisfied Jesus' hunger. In Matthew 4, you're also able to find what satisfied his hunger. Number one, what satisfied Jesus' hunger was God's word. I'll say that again, God's word. He said, man shall not live off bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He had a hunger for God's word. The word was inside of him. He hungered for God's word. Number two, he hungered for God's will. Somebody say God's will. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And over and over and over again, we're able to see his appetite tested in that area. Where Jesus always hungered for God's will for his life. God has a will for your life. God has a plan for your life. Do we hunger for God's will for us still? He hungered for God's will. And thirdly, he hungered to finish God's work. I like that one right there. He says, my food is to finish his work. Not just to start his work. But he wanted to finish the work. And what I love when I hear at the cross of Jesus, when he's on the cross, what does he say? It is finished. I finished what I started. I finished what I came here for. My hunger was tested. His hunger was tested. But nevertheless, when it was tested, it always came out that he was more hungry for God's word, God's will, and to finish God's work. These are the things that satisfied Jesus' hunger. These are the foods that satisfied his hunger. These are the food that Jesus craved. And this hunger and thirst is found throughout the Bible. It's natural desires that we desire food and water. One of the clear indicators that something is wrong physically is when we lose our appetite. It's the same spiritually. To hunger and thirst for God is a natural desire. But when there is no hunger for the presence of God, something is spiritually wrong. Since hunger and thirst is natural to us, it often finds fulfillment in other things other areas rather than seeking God. See, so eating junk can dull your physical appetite. How many of you can say amen with me today? So that which is not of God can also dull our spiritual appetite. So we need to make sure that we're craving the right food today. You know why? Because you are what you eat. If you're eating junk, it's going to affect your appetite. We are what we eat. And whenever Jesus' appetite was tested, he always chose the will of God over the desires of his flesh. It's getting quiet in here today. As leaders, we got to make sure we got the right intake within our life. We got to make sure we're craving the right food. Because there's food from above and there's food from below. 1 Corinthians 10, 21 says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. We got to pick what food we want to eat. As leaders, we got to make a choice on what's our intake within our life. Because what we intake within our life will affect our desires, our spiritual appetite. 
And I want you to know today that you can't outwork a bad diet. I'll say that again for you. You cannot outwork a bad diet. Ministry, working hard, isn't going to fix the problem. You can't work, 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 work your way out of it. You could work all you want, but if you ain't eating right, it's going to affect you. You could come in here and stack chairs and look good and stay late and get here early. But if when you go home, you're eating junk, it's going to begin to affect you. It's going to begin to dull your appetite. It's going to begin to mess up your appetite. As leaders, we got to crave the right stuff. Somebody say amen with me today. I want to go as far as to say this. Not only do we deny the table of demons and the, and the cup of demons, but we got to be careful that we're eating home-cooked meals. we got to be careful what we're watching on Instagram and YouTube today because there's a lot of false prophets out there. There's a lot of false doctrines out there preaching about greasy grace and everything goes. Do whatever you want. You're, you're saved by grace. We hear this all the time. And that's Okay, if some people want to follow that, that's on them, but we're called. We have a special anointing that we're to live up to. They may do what they do, but you have a special anointing that God has placed on your life. He has placed on this ministry, and this anointing isn't cheap. This anointing is not going to come by playing church and playing games. It comes with a certain standard. It comes with a certain type of lifestyle. It comes with a certain type of integrity. It comes with a certain type of walk. It comes with a certain type of standard that if you want this anointing, you got to live up to it we have a special anointing we got some special promises that call for a special walk call for a standard to live up to so we got to make sure we're still eating some home-cooked meals be careful what you listen to out there there's some funny doctrines out there right now we need to make sure we're eating some good home-cooked meals, some good VO home-style cooked meals that keep it real, keep it 100, and keep it challenging us to change and not to be, to, not to blend in with the world, but to stand out of the world. Somebody say amen today. Our hunger will be tested in the same way it was tested as Jesus. The devil's going to show up with his bread. He's going to show up with his food. He's going to show up at your wilderness. He's going to show up when you're hungry. And like Jesus, we always must choose our spiritual appetite over our physical appetite. I wonder if there's still some hungry people in Victory Outreach San Diego. I wonder if there's still some hungry people in God's anointed now generation. I wonder if there's still a third wave that says, I'm more hungry for God's will than anything in this world. You can keep it. You can have it. You could take it. I want God's will. I want God's plan. I want to finish his work. This is my hunger. This is what I desire. This is what I live for. This is what I breathe for this is what I choose to do and how I choose to live I'm hungry I'm hungry I'm hungry somebody say it with me today say I'm hungry this is what Jesus craved God's word God's will God's work the appetite of Jesus the food of Jesus lastly the table of Jesus Luke 22 14 through 20 this is very familiar to us today it says, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it's, it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it. And gave it to them saying, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. See, this is a very, very familiar portion of scripture. It's towards the end of Jesus' ministry where, we, we, where he got ready for the last supper before his body was to be crucified. And before he was to die for the sins of humanity, he got his disciples together. He began to break bread and he passed them cups and he said, eat and drink and do this in remembrance of me. 
as many of us have done many times. But what he said is significant is when you do this, remember me. Somebody say, remember me. We do this in communion many of the times, and we remember the blood that was shed. We remember his body broken, and it's an impactful time for us. But for the disciples, it was more than the body and the blood. For the disciples, I'm sure they remembered more at that time. Whenever they sat at the table after Jesus had ascended, whenever they ate bread, whenever they drank, They would not only reminisce on the supper, the last supper. They would not only remember on the body being broken and the blood being shed. But they would remember all the occasions where Jesus showed them what he was hungry for. They would remember all the times that Jesus said, I hunger for God's will. I hunger for God's work. I hunger to finish what God called me to. They would remember all those times. They would remember all those times where Jesus showed his spiritual hunger. They would remember Jesus in the wilderness, choosing the word over the bread. They would remember Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, accepting the cup of suffering and choosing God's will over his own, even though it hurt him, even though it was going to come with pain and suffering. He chose God's will. They would remember the time that they were trying to be good disciples and just take care of Jesus. And he comes and chops them and rebukes them and tells them, I don't want your bread. I want God's will and I want to finish God's work. I'm sure in their mind they would begin to remember. They would remember. They would remember that they served under a hungry leader. They would remember that they followed a hungry leader. They would remember that they served with the hungry leader. They would reminisce. On the hunger, the spiritual hunger of Jesus. And we could also reminisce on the hunger of Jesus, but we can also reminisce on those that went before us. We could also reminisce on some of our elders. We could also reminisce on our founders. We could also reminisce on our pioneers. We could also reminisce on our pastors. We could remember a time when Pastor Sonny Argazzoni Sr. came to a pivotal point in this ministry where they told him, take the television show. Go ahead, you're going to be rich. Leave the ministry. You're going to be set up here for life. Your children are going to be okay. Take the TV. Take the TV stations. Run with TBN. Go ahead, you're going to be set, but you got to let go of the, vi- you got to let go of the vision. But Pastor Sonny said, I'm more hungry for the vision than the television. He chose the vision over the television. He was more hungry for God's will. We remember a time of Pastor Sonny Argonzoni Jr. who was going to go pro in baseball, who was going to go into colleges and, and be set up for life and maybe even go to the pros one day. But God's will was a bigger hunger for him than to make some career, than to pursue some career. He was more hungry for God's will than he was for some career. He was more hungry for the call than he was for the cash. We come from a lineage of men and women who chose the spiritual appetite over the physical appetite. You're cut from a fabric of men and women who chose God's call over anything, who chose God's call first who put themselves last and place God first that's why we're here today that's why you're here today that's why we have this church that's why we have this ministry because of people who are hungry people who are hungry for God's will people who are hungry to finish God's work that's what's needed to be the year of building that you're proclaiming it is That's what's needed in the ministry. That's what's needed in the gang. It's some people that are really hungry for God's will. That really have an appetite to finish God's work. I want to share a statistic with you today. Out of 100% of people, 90% believe that God has a plan for them. 70% will pray about that plan. 50% will tell somebody God has a plan. 25% will try to reach that plan, and only 5% will actually fulfill that plan. Were the 90 not called of God? Were the 90 not called by God? Yes, they were called, but they just weren't hungry enough to pay the price. They weren't hungry enough to pursue the call. They didn't develop their spiritual hunger. Somewhere along the way, they developed some eating disorders, and they got messed up and lost, and they let go of the call of God. 
What's needed in this generation, what's needed in this church, what's needed in this ministry are those five percenters. What's needed in this ministry is those 5% who will say, I'll do anything that I have to do. I'll go anywhere that I have to go. I'll sacrifice anything that I have to sacrifice. I'll lay it on the table. I'll give it my all because God has called me and I'm going to finish God's work. I'm going to finish God's plan. I'm going to finish the work that God has for my life. That's what's needed to take nations. That's what's needed to take cities. That's what's needed to expand this vision is hungry leadership to rise up. Hungry leadership are the ones that build ministries. Hungry leadership are the ones that crack cities open. Hungry leadership are the ones who invade countries. Hungry leadership are the ones who take possession of the promises of God. That's who does it. The hungry ones. You can see it in their actions. They say, God's called me, but they ain't even in Vethi. See, I'm chosen to be a pastor. But all they're doing is woofing about it. It's not shown in their steps. It's spoken of through their lips, but it's not shown in their steps. You know what that tells me? That they're really not hungry for it. Because hungry people pursue God's call for their life. Hungry people pursue God's mission for their life. Hungry people. And I want to let you know today that right now, the vision is hungry. I'll say that again for you today. The vision is hungry. <clears throat> Pastor Sonny's hungry. Guadalajara's hungry. Panama's hungry. San Diego's hungry. Frankfurt, Germany's hungry. The vision is hungry, but are we hungry? It's looking for hungry leadership to invade and begin to take possession of this promise that's been given to our ministry of nations and desolate cities being inhabited by descendants. It's only going to happen if we develop our spiritual hunger. Real quick, I want to give you a few ways to continue to develop your spiritual hunger. Number one, study the word. You know, in a dry season when you're trying to get on the word and you seem to hit a wall, do something different. Buy a new Bible. Get some new Bibles in your arsenal. Stop buying clothes and start buying a sword. (laughs) For the price of those shoes, you can get four new Bibles. Continue to go after God's word. Develop your appetite. Number two, pray more. If you're hitting a wall in prayer and you feel like it's routine, download a new playlist or something called YouTube. Something called iTunes. Get a new worship playlist so you could go into the inner courts in prayer. Fast. Separate yourself. Say no to your flesh. Strengthen your no's and strengthen your yeses by fasting. Evangelize. I'll say it again. Evangelize. Your hunger will continue to grow and develop. Surround yourself with hungry leaders. You know something about Jesus? We say he was in the streets a lot, but he spent most of his time around healthy people. He spent most of his time around some healthy people. He witnessed to the sick people, but he didn't spend all of his time with them. Because I'll tell you something, spiritual eating disorders are contagious. And so we need to make sure that we're around some healthy leadership. We need to make sure that we're clinging to some healthy leaders. Because if you're clinging to some sick leaders, it's going to begin to contaminate you. Next is surround yourself with hungry disciples. There was nothing that will get you moving faster than a hungry disciple behind you. Give me a word. Come on, give me something else. Can I go with you? Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to fast. Keep you hungry. We must be a people who continue to develop our hunger and never become satisfied with our appetite. Somebody say amen. Because I'll tell you something. The wolf on top of the hill isn't as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. So we need to stay climbing. We need to stay hungry. 
We need to say, I'm not satisfied. I may be coming older in Christ, but I'm just becoming more hungry. I may be more mature in my relationship with God, but I want more cities. I want more souls. I want more people. I want more disciples. I want to pack this church out. I want to see triple service, quadruple services. I want to see the pastoral leadership outgrow this room. I want to see this church become mega. I see what my pastor sees. I feel what my pastor here feels. I feel the promise in my life and I'm hungry for it I want this to come to pass I desire God's will I desire God's work I desire God's plan I'm hungry you know I didn't have a lot coming up in the ministry when I got saved I didn't know how to preach I didn't know leadership I didn't know how to teach I didn't have many things going for me I wasn't that sharp But one thing I had for me is I was hungry. I was hungry. I knew God called me, and I said, man, God, I want this call. I don't want to waste no time. I want to pursue it. I'm going after it. If you called me, I'm running towards it. I didn't have many things going for me, but one thing I had is I was hungry. I want you to stand all over this place. You could begin ministering on the keyboard. A year to build is going to come to pass if the people are hungry. If the people have a good appetite. If the people have a healthy appetite. Who don't have disorders going on in their life. But a people who say, the world can't offer me anything. What I find satisfaction for. Is in the kingdom. Nothing in this world could satisfy my hunger. Because I hunger for God's word. I hunger for God's will. I hunger not just to start, but to finish what God has called me to do. What God has called this church to do. What God has brought you here for. Because he brought you here for a purpose. He brought you here for a specific time and a specific plan that he has for your life. But it's sad to say only 5% are going to fulfill it. But I wonder if we're crazy enough to believe that the 5% is in the room. That there's some people in San Diego that the devil doesn't know how hungry you are. He doesn't realize how hungry you are that nothing he can offer you can satisfy your hunger because it's not satisfied by your flesh. It's satisfied by your father. Hungry leadership. Hungry people is what's needed within this church, within this ministry. And I'm done preaching today. But I came to expose the devil and I came to warn some people If your appetite has grown dull, be on guard. Because when a leader goes, one of the first things to go is his appetite. When a person's ready to die, one of the first things to go is their appetite. God brought me here today to tell you that he wants to rekindle that appetite. Remember when you got saved? It's not going to compare to the hunger that you leave here with. It's not going to match up to the hunger that you leave here with. God's going to rekindle it in some of us today. God's going to stir it up once again. You're going to be the hungriest that you've ever been. Some people here, you came into this place and you can relate to what I was talking about. And you got some eating disorders, some spiritual eating disorders in your life. Yeah, you put on a front, you act like it's good. You say amen. You shake your head. But inside you're rejecting everything that you're hearing. Inside you're saying, no, I don't want to listen. No, that's not for me. That's the devil. He wants to get you sick. He wants to take you out. I'll tell you something. Change don't feel good in the moment. But you will be glad that you listened. In the end, you will be glad that you heeded to the instruction. You will be glad when you're able to say 30 years later, I thank God that I listened. I thank God I obeyed. I thank God I didn't date her. I thank God I didn't date him. I thank God I didn't take that job. I thank God that I didn't take that opportunity. I thank God that I didn't go through that door. I thank God.